Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got a ton of big cryptocurrency news to cover today. It looks like the narrative is turning slightly bearish for Bitcoin in the short term. You know we've been covering that on the channel for some time. If you're not just looking at the headlines, you will dig deeper into the content and you'll see the direction that we are covering here. Now, I've also got a lot of information on the ecosystem, which looks like it's going to be taking off for summer. No, it's not just some sort of clickbaity headlines. We're going to look at that in the charts and also some deep dive research from a good guy on Twitter called Adam Cochran. So we're going to have a look at that in the video today. Lots of stuff coming up. So be sure to stick right through the video. We've got the timestamps down below. So use those if you need to. And if you find value from the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more cryptocurrency updates, hit the bell notification icon so you can be updated with the time sensitive content. Let's dive in. Lots to cover today. So let's dive into the market caps. Now we're at $2 trillion. We've just touched that again. Total market cap, 1 trillion for Bitcoin. Ethereum at around 300 billion. It's getting closer and we have hit the $2,500 ETH, and it's starting to stick at this level as well. And also ETH against the BTC pair looking reasonably strong. Bitcoin has continued to slide down its dominance now at 49.6. We'll look at that on the chart at the end. 14.4 for Ethereum. This is looking really strong. And I think the narrative is going to continue in that direction for ETH and the major ecosystem, which we're going to have a look at on the charts again. Now, if you follow the channel, you know exactly what we're talking about. I'm very bullish on it. Binance, 82 billion, still holding its ground. Ripple, I think it is beginning to just have a bit of a pullback, even though it's gone up pretty solidly in the last 24 hours. 28% up, very decent for a top 10. So $1.44, yes, XRP. If you're around from 2017, you'd be calling it Ripple too. Uh, Tether, 50 billion. We're getting a lot of Tethers being printed at the moment. Uh, Cardano, $1.26. Doge is still trying to struggle to keep its ground in that top 10. And Uniswap has just punched through and we're seeing 12% over the last 24 hours. So just recently, I'm filming this at 7.30 p.m. on the 27th and Uniswap's just pushed through the $40 level. So it's just holding up there. Chainlink is another big one. Yes, Solana is the call here. Fifth, nearly 50% in the last seven days. Even if this drops from here, this system, this ecosystem is going to do absolutely amazing this summer. All right, fear and greed, neutral. We just bounced out of the fear. Now we're sitting at neutral, so not too bad. I think we'll probably hold these levels and in the short term, possibly see this fear creep in again, just to wash out some more weekends. Now the trends, are what, the main reason why I'm looking at that as the, the scale tipping back towards fear is on the trends last 90 days worldwide, biggest search volumes, crypto, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, all on the decline. Dogecoin had its peak declining, crypto declining, Bitcoin declining. So I think this might just be a bit of a sucker's rally at the moment. That's what's leading me to believe that. We obviously check the charts to uh, get an update of what's happening next. Elon Musk, so we're on to the news, says Tesla sold Bitcoin to prove liquidity as cash alternative. This has been covered a lot today, so it's been out for several hours now, and people are arguing left, right, and center about whether he's actually doing that to uh, make a lot of money for Tesla, you know, pump and dump Bitcoin, or if he's actually sticking to his word here. I think f he's got bigger things to fry, bigger fish to fry, especially from the interviews I've seen with Elon Musk. His... He likes to play games and his interests lie in building stuff that humanity, I guess, wants or needs. Uh, you, you make your own decision about whether they actually need what he's making, but he, he's more interested in that side of things. So in terms of the whole fight around, you know, just pumping and dumping on the little guys, absolute garbage in my opinion. So it's covered across lots of different news outlets. Tesla sold Bitcoin in quarter one for proceeds of 272 million. So he sold about 10%, got around 272 million at the time, means his Bitcoin was worth about 2.7 billion if he sold 10% of it. And that basically means if he was buying it around 20 or $30,000, then it probably wasn't too long ago that he did sell it within quarter one. So we can kind of work that out. I'm sure someone else has, but in that, uh, basically in the 
earnings from Tesla that came out in the quarter one. You can see here that he has sold 200, well, Tesla has sold 272 million in Bitcoin. <clears throat> so more bearish narrative news. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of new people think I'm a bear of Bitcoin. Absolute garbage. This is just the narrative that's being pushed by the news now. Think back a month ago. This stuff really didn't make big headlines or it was kind of laughed at. Now it's making reasonable headlines. All 200 cryptocurrency exchanges could be shut down under new regulation in South Korea. Regulator warns. Now you might not think it's that big of a deal, but South Korea does do a lot of trading and in particular in the Bitcoin market. So if this was to happen, it could have devastating effects on cryptocurrency, at least in the short term until they're recovered. And we found buyers for the other Bitcoin that are sitting out there waiting to be bought up by the whales. So I don't think this is going to happen, but I'm just some guy sitting here in Australia speculating on the South Korean government and what they're going to do. I think maybe they've just blown this out of proportion and they're probably going to put in a, a bigger regulations and allow them to continue trading, but it's just going to make it a hell of a lot more difficult. That tends to be what government does because they just want to pull money from left, right and center to be able to pay for the debt that they keep creating. PayPal CEO discusses the shift in payments, confirms cryptocurrency demand. So they are definitely moving a lot further towards cryptocurrency and accepting that as a payment gateway. You guys in the US already get it. We don't have it yet in Australia and I assume other parts of the world. Uh, also, we saw Venmo, a mobile payment system owned by PayPal, has only last week adopted cryptocurrencies. So they're definitely going in that direction. And this can happen even if the market is falling. That's usually a good time for them to be building out and creating more gateways, more services for cryptocurrencies. So although it's bullish, doesn't mean the price has to go up. You just have to remember that this is going on. And when the market comes back, just know that it probably hasn't been priced in just yet. That's why I view these sorts of news articles, especially when the overall narrative may be bearish. NFTs still getting pushed by mainstream pop culture. Eminem and Emily here. I'm not going to pronounce his surname, but Emily <laughs> looking to bring out some NFTs of their own. This is probably going to keep going all year by the looks of it. Even if the market drops, everyone's going to get into this ecosystem so they can connect with their fans. And of course, if the fans want it, why not? You're out there making more money. That's the whole game. Binance launches stocks, token trading for Apple, MicroStrategy and Microsoft. More bullish news in the Binance space. Binance chain is on a parabola, surpassing Ethereum in several metrics. So the first here is Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, active addresses. So Binance has more active addresses. And the next metric is Binance Smart Chain, daily transactions, a hell of a lot more daily transactions. This tweet here pretty much sums it up. I don't know these people, but I probably think along the similar lines, looking at Binance, they will probably, well, they are tailoring more towards the smaller players in the space, smaller bank accounts, smaller funds to, to be played with and doing smaller transactions and maybe more of them, which basically would account for these metrics. So it's not really something to get I wouldn't say overly excited about, but it is a very good sign that the, the chain is being used very well. Now, this leads me over to the potential of Binance bloating. Is it possible? Potentially. And that's what I see here from Adam Cochran's tweets. Now, if you haven't read it, I posted this on my Twitter. So if you're not following, go over and follow now. The link is down below. This is important stuff to be reading. If you just want to be listening to people on the internet and doing whatever the hell they say, by all means, go ahead. But if you want the deep dive research, go and follow these guys. These guys are putting the, the hours in, the hundreds of hours into the research. And they're just sharing it all for free on Twitter. This is fantastic. So read that about Solana. The whole point I'm making here is that it could be that the Binance chain could be getting bloated within the next few months, which leads into Solana not being bloated, is very fast, very cheap, even cheaper than Binance, and it's way faster than Binance as well. That's about 150,000 transactions per second at fractions of a penny. That's what I've been reading here. It's not in competition with ETH. It's just going to work alongside with ETH. That's the narrative as well. And Solana is at around 12 or so billion dollar market cap. So it's at 12 billion. If it is to get into the top three, 
it's got a huge potential to gain. Now, it's not your 50Xs or 100Xs, but to me, this is a very safe bet of a potential 7, 8X into this space over a longer period of time. And that's why I'm going heavier into Solana, a more trusted project out there. And they have smart contracts, whereas Cardano doesn't. So even if it's to get above Cardano, say it gets into around 40 or 50 billion, there's no, you know, four times the money there. So go and check this out. It's on my Twitter. Follow my Twitter over there. Sol up 83% this week. It's actually closer to 100% from that low during one of the largest market drawbacks in crypto history and showing no sign of stopping. Uh, 3x from here would still put it below Cardano, who doesn't even have live smart contracts yet. Overall, Sol is looking very, very strong and you can stake Sol as well. Staking war rewards to double by 2022. 18.9 billion is the estimate here, especially when EIP 1559 comes in. So this is part of the Ethereum network, the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade. There's nearly 4 million ETH staked on ETH 2.0, which is worth about 8.6 billion in today's price. And so as all this takes effect and the hard fork comes in around July, it is potentially going to increase the price. Of course, that's what we're all expecting and we think is going to happen. And then that leads over to the staking rewards to potentially double from this point because the prices will obviously go up as well if that is to happen. So another fantastic piece here. I'm obviously excited about that. And I think that's all leading into the Ethereum narrative of also increasing during summer. NFTs, Theta, positive news here. Registration for Theta real-time NFT marketplace starts. So I'll just read a little bit here. Basically, Theta is a decentralized video streaming platform. By employing blockchain, the platform hopes to interrupt centralized platforms such as YouTube. New innovative approach that fairly compensates content creators and rewards viewers for sharing excess bandwidth. So this is the important part here. June release comes after the reschedule from the initial release date of 21st of April. And I think that may be what has dropped the price a little bit. We'll have a look at that on the chart in just a moment. Last piece here, I'll leave this link in the description. So check this out if you've ever wondered about PancakeSwap, Uniswap, SushiSwap, Balancer, Curve. There is a lot of content here. You can see here how much data there is here to read. So if you are interested and you want to read it, go ahead and grab this article. I'll leave a link to this down below. Very, very useful. All right, on to the charts. Now, TVK, big one here. A lot of people have seen it complaining and crying that their TVK has gone down. Bad call, blah, blah, blah. You guys are such noobs. Um, sorry to be offensive to some. Well, sorry, not sorry. If you are crying about a crypto that has fallen in price, go and do your own research for starters. This one is something that I am buying and I am holding and I've been doing a lot of research on. I'm not saying I would be buying, well, I'm, I didn't buy everything at the one price that I got in at around here at around 70, 75 cents. I'm just being dollar cost averaging and I'm not buying when it peaks like this. I want to buy it when it dips. This is looking like a beautiful dip. Even if we go a bit further, it's a was a $60 million market cap on a reasonable project. Now, if everything changes on this and stuff turns sour, I reserve the rights to sell my investment. And that is up to you guys to continue following the project of something that you're invested in if it doesn't turn out the way you're expecting it to. I like this pattern already. We've got a few days up after many, many days down, one, two, three days up, reasonably big volume as we push through these lows. That's looking pretty decent to me at this point in time. It's only a daily chart, so it's still micro view. It's not macro at the moment. So we're gonna continue following that. It's a project that I like the look of on, uh, for my portfolio, and that's why I continue to follow it. Now, other projects on here that I wanted to see was Theta, as we just talked about. 21st of April, we got a spike in, uh, in the news saying that it was gonna be delayed. So we must've had a bit of delayed news somewhere around uh, 17, 18th of April, plus the market tanked at that time. And we hit the 50%. You, you know, if you follow the channel, this is a fantastic, fantastic tool to use that comes in time and time again. You're probably getting bored of it, but it works. 50%. Bang, bang on that. This is our moving average. Potentially, we'll see a fall to that. That's what I'm waiting for. But there will be signs to say that we won't get there. And they're not there. They haven't shown yet. But if they do, then obviously, I'll be following that as well. Ethereum has been cranking it. So let's look at Cake and then Ethereum. It's all part of this ecosystem of people trying to make money on swaps. Let's take our Cake from BUSD. 
it is skyrocketing to new highs. Uh, we are now up from our lows that we set in March, 260%. Absolutely wild. Will this stop? There's no sign just yet. We could skyrocket from here, but of course, like I say with every single market, as they get higher and higher, the risk becomes far greater than the reward to play out. So from 34 bucks, shooting up to 70, $68 would be a double, and that's only 100%. You've got to get that far considering where we have come from. It's not that it can't do it, but the risk reward just gets thrown out the window for me with these sorts of things, which is why I'm not that interested in it. But I think it will probably still do very, very well because the Sol chart looks very much like this as well. So let's have a quick look at Sol, one of our major plays, $46. Look at that, just straight up. People are asking, should I be buying now? I cannot advise that because it's getting very risky at this point in time. Not to say that we can't keep going up and if you see the gains happening and you haven't got in, that is a difficult one. The times I like to buy is when we dip and we dip to 50% levels, they're the best times. Uh, and at the moment, should we get a move down to 34 to 38, I'm happy to buy again. Even if we get maybe about 40 bucks, I reckon this little area is a very nice area. So that's at the moment, dollar cost averaging in on that. If we go up again, sure probably buying as the breakout happens above $48 or $49. Across to ETH, because ETH has just been very solid lately, which is why it's one of my major holdings in my retirement fund. And you can see that on Instagram. Link to Instagram is down below. I post my portfolio over there, my retirement fund, my uh, superannuation, self-managed superannuation here in Australia. Now, volume has increased as we've begun to climb. The main thing we want to see here is a close above this high. The high is 2646 dollars $2,646. That would be a good sign of continued bullishness. But from here, we want to see what the volume happens tomorrow. Maybe we we'll get a little pullback to 24, 2450. But if we get a nice little skyrocket through and closes multiple above 2650, this is looking very sweet to get towards that 3K and then our 3.5K target. So we'll keep following ETH very strong at the moment. Bitcoin, Bitcoin dominance, this is what we're looking at, 54.7. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm looking at consolidating my smaller cryptocurrency projects into the majors, the stuff that I like more. Bitcoin, ETH, the Solana ecosystem. What we've seen is a fall to 50%. So we're getting a bounce off 50%. That is very nice. It's just the way it should always play out. And so it's no wonder that we saw a bounce yesterday. We had 11 days down. It has to bounce at some point. It has to bounce with some volume because the shorts would be buying back to take profits. So if they're all doing that at a similar time, they have to buy back, which pushes the price up. So now in the next few days, we're going to find out whether this is just shorts covering, for, covering to take profit or if we're going to see a continued bear market uh, or a continued bull market as well. So if the shorts are covering, we get a bounce. And if they start shorting again and the market is still still has a narrative tinge to it, then we'll start to come down again. However, if it's the shorts covering and the bulls are back, then we'll start to see an accumulation and a bounce from this point up into higher levels. The key is this bar here at 60,433. Keep an eye on that bar. If we can close above that point, we're in a much stronger position and it's not very far away from where we are now. So I'm going to keep my patience. It's about 10 or 11%. That is the key level to be closing above if we're going to see a change in trend. Bitcoin dominance, 50.8%. It is still on a very sharp downward slope. Not as sharp as it was through here. We've held up a little bit, but we possibly will be continuing through here. And some of the bigger projects are probably going to continue to take some of the dominance from Bitcoin, just like Ethereum. Last couple I want to cover are Matic, which has seen phenomenal rises in the last week, gone up about 100%, a little longer than a week. So these lows to now it's 10 days and it has skyrocketed approximately 130%, pretty decent, it's broken through this high, definitely wanna see another close above it. This is gonna to continue to play into the summer, I believe, because it's a solid ETH layer two scaling solution and it's probably one of the best ones out there from what I have been researching. So I think Matic is going to continue on this climb. It's still, it's not a bad entry here now that we've broken through these highs. Two more to quick have a quick look at. 
are Radium, because this is part of the Solana ecosystem. Radium's at $14, and it as well has broken through these highs, and this is after everything else has crashed, right? So these are the stronger projects in the space while everything else is falling. You can see some of the NFT plays aren't passing their highs. They are still struggling at some lows. Stuff also uh, XRP, which we'll have a look at, but this is what we want to be finding is the other t the coins that are breaking through into new all-time highs when the market is looking weak. Check out XRP. XRP is right here. So $1.40. And we're just seeing a little bounce now from these lows. Now, the percentages look amazing, but no one's buying that exact low. And I can assure you most people who are new to the space are probably not selling out to take some profits either. So currently we're up from the low about 62%. Top was around 70 odd percent. Now, this is my little trade here that I'm looking at. Double top. Now, a double top has to be uh, a top that meets it with the same price. And the entry is not there yet. But if it does get there, this looks like a very solid trade. And I'll be looking at an exit of around 70 to 80 cents with the potential of it going further to around 55 to 60 cents. Sounds absolutely crazy, I know. But that is the double top. Now, if that doesn't play out, you'll get a bit of a pullback to around $1.20, $1.25 and then start to move on. The other scenario is that it just pushes straight through and we head up. But I think at the moment, the space is looking just a little bit tired. That is all of the cryptos that I wanted to cover in today's video. It was a long one, but we had a lot of good news to get through. Obviously, some bearish narrative for Bitcoin, but overall, long term, I'm still very bullish in the space, but I love the cooling off. I love to see this thing cool off because that's going to set us up for a big second half of this bull market. And we've seen a lot of these cryptocurrencies continue to sell off and just go a little bit quieter. And it's going to share the spotlight with some fantastic projects which are coming up, just like Solana and the Solana ecosystem. I'll leave it there for today's video. I've been sharing this with the guys in the Investor Accelerator. So if you want to come across and join us in the membership, there's a link to that in the description down below. There are places free to join now. If you're not ready to uh, put that commitment in, then there is a free newsletter which you can sign up to. Join that down below. It comes out every two weeks. Learn about cryptos and investing and of course trading. So yeah, it's a free newsletter. Join that down below. Join me here on Insta uh, Instagram for the Q&As daily, Twitter for the news. Links are all down below as well. Be sure to go and check that those Twitter links out that I'm going to post in the description. That's some good research there for you guys. And like the video up if you found some value from this. Subscribe to the channel. It goes a very long way to helping us out. We're on our way to 130,000 subscribers. Absolutely wild. That's about it. Bell notification icon. Share it with a friend. I'll catch you guys next time or on a live stream coming up. Until next time, have more fun to get more done.